caused us, caused foreign investment in the Bahamas to dry up. But if you people were running a good economy in America, this would not be the, the, the situation in the Bahamas. I agree that our economy ha has had uh, mismanagement, but the mismanagement, as I suggest, By economists. The mismanagement has been precisely by the fact that the government, through its own policies, created unsustainable housing and investment and consumer debt bubbles that burst. And now the problem has been exacerbated, as we talked about earlier, with misguided government policies that are prolonging this recession and will place huge financial burdens on the American population because of growing debt that will make it very difficult for them to have enough money left over to visit you here as a tourist. You are against regulation by government. First of all, the financial Aren't markets... You? Yes. Yes. Um, the financial uh, the markets Canadian, are not the, unregulated. The Canadian, in the, US. the Canadian banking system and financial market did not suffer like the American market did, because the Canadian market is far better regulated than the American market. And it's a good thing that you have the Canadian government regulating the Canadian market. Had it not been for that, we would have worse problems. How does the Canadian government know what sh what the private sector should be regulated with? How do these bureaucrats know right regulations? What gives them the wisdom and omniscience to know how other people should manage and interact with their commercial affairs? Do I know enough to manage your businesses, Mr. Jones? What if I was a, what if I was a Bahamian and elected to pre office with my existing knowledge and experience? And now I said to you, Mr. Jones, I've decided that I know enough to see that you fairly and properly manage your, your, your media uh, companies. Who, who gives me the wisdom and knowledge of knowing how to manage your business? You do. And I'm going to now intrude and tell you how, to, how your business should be run and what regulations under which it should be managed. But That's kind of arrogant and presumptuous but, but, on the, but my is, part, isn't it? But, but this, these are the same people. These are not demigods. Isn't it true who, that who Canadian, this control? Isn't it true, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ebling, that uh, Canadian banks did not fail Canadian institutions did not fail as uh, institutions in the United States did because the Canadian government had proper policies, proper regulations in place. The fact is, is that not enough American financial institutions have not failed because the government came in and propped them up when due to, due to bad decision making, some, some of the management in those firms and some of the companies themselves should have been shaken out and allowed to fail so that the pieces could be brought back together reasonably and sustainably. But now we're propping up companies that have connections in Washington, have, have deals with politicians and bureaucrats, when in fact they should pay the price for their mistakes. You, you are, I don't believe that this is a good thing. In the long run, this will be more harmful both to the United States and the world economy. You have a man who is languishing in jail now, Maddox, yeah. uh, uh, because he was not regulated. Because of negligence on the part of the government of the United States SEC. to, in, to in, uh, uh, the, the Security and Exchange Commission yeah, yeah. To, ex, to ensure that he was not robbing people. In fact, the Security and Exchange Commission did occasionally check him out. They let him pass. <laughs> and the point is, if you want to know, the, the, the agency in the United States is that is the most unsupervised, supervised, unregulated, and therefore uh, the, the most scandalous in its behavior? It's the U.S. government. Who regulates the U.S. government? They, ta they tax people in the American society and hand it to their friends on Wall Street. They, they, they give subsidies to corporate entities like the automobile markets at the expense of the ordinary taxpayer who's just trying to get by with his modest income. I consider that corruption and plunder and mismanagement. Okay, we have Dr. to take a break here, Godfrey. When we return, Godfrey Amos will have a question for Dr. Ebling. This is Jones and Company. We take this break and we'll come right back. Well, here we are in, on Jones and Company uh, speaking with a professor of economics and an author, Godfrey Enos. Dr. Evelyn, based on the thrust of your arguments, you, you, you really want a, a laissez-faire kind of government, governmental system. I, what I want to see is a free society in which individuals live their own lives, uh, direct their own activities, interact with their fellow human beings on the moral principles of free exchange and voluntary association, <laughs> 
And government has a crucial and essential function to secure, as I said, our rights to life, liberty, and honestly acquired property. But other than enforcing those rules of the game, all things should be then left to the private interactions of you and me. But that's sort of utopian, isn't it? No. I think it is more utopian to believe that people elected to office or bureaucrats appointed to various government positions have, have godlike wisdom and omniscience to be able to know what's right, who what's fair, who should receive what. In the real world of politics, it's special interest groups who use the power of the ballot box and campaign contributions to plunder their neighbors for special interest favors, subsidies, protections at the expense of the vast majority of the population. But don't you think those situations arise because governments sometimes function in a vacuum without consult consultation that you mentioned uh, the, the media business. If the government acted in, in, in a consultative role, played a consultative role in discussing with Mr. Jones the media business or the communications business and arriving at a decision rather than taking the high-handed approach of telling him what needs to happen. I would suggest that if, if Mr. Jones was brought into a regulatory process in which the government now had responsibility for what got televised on television, what got into the newspapers, one of two things would happen to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones would either go out of business because he had too much integrity to compromise with those who wanted to tell him what he was to publish or what he was to air, or Mr. Jones might be tempted in a corrupt way to manipulate the system at the expense of his competitors in the media industry. It's better for Mr. Jones to follow his own knowledge, his own judgment, his own creative ability to fairly and openly compete for the attention of the viewers and the readers without the government trying to be his partner. I'm Dr. Eblin. Uh, the government is called upon to protect the weak in our society, on, in any society. In the United States, you have a social security system. In the Bahamas, we have a national insurance mm -hmm. system. Based on what you are saying, you are against Absol these Absolutely. Systems. In fact, you and, know... And, and, and um, your, your, your um, mantra is really that uh, everyone should be for themselves and God for us all. No. You know, that, that, that is for two things. First of all, you mentioned uh, Bernie Madoff, the man who ran that Ponzi scheme and built people out of literally tens of millions of dollars. Nothing has been a larger Ponzi scheme in the United States than the trillion dollars Ponzi scheme of, of the Social Security system, the government-managed retirement system. The fact is all the money that was taken in into Social Security was then taken by the U.S. government and spent to cover its deficit spending. There's no lockbox. There's no pot of gold. And the government is promising payments to people in an aging population, as much of the Western population is getting demographically older, without the financial wherewithal to meet its obligations. But who the should protect the you when you're old? Who should protect Godfrey in his, um, uh, um, when he is an old man? It's himself and his family and, 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 and other people in the community. It's not the responsibility of the government. It's his responsibility. Should, Whose life is it? Do you want to be free or do you want to be a slave? Uh, do you want to make your own decisions in managing your own life or do you want to put it in the hands of your prime minister? But, and by the way, are you sure your prime minister really cares about you personally? Because that's what you're putting him in charge of. But sh shouldn't there be some national savings uh, program so that we can uh, take care of the elderly in our society, those who are not able to care for themselves? That is the duty of individuals and private charity. I would argue that private charity, private associations, will be more diligent and careful about this. Why? Because they're spending their own donors or their own personal money. You always manage your own money far better than you manage somebody else's money. And a politician is not even managing someone else's money that they've handed them. He's taken it through taxes. And therefore, the, he will not have the incentive or the motive to really be concerned that the goal of the, of, of the action is, uh, is, 